Ergonomics is the study of interactions between people and their work. It aims to reduce hazards by adjusting the design of work to fit the worker's abilities and improve workplace safety and productivity. Ergonomics is a science that defines the principles of good work design. Taking into consideration how the body best performs, ergonomics applies this knowledge so that the chance for developing an MSD can be reduced. Controlling hazards by using ergonomics can be an efficient and effective way to minimize MSDs. MSD hazards are reduced or eliminated primarily by effective design of the places workers work, tools they use, and tasks they perform for controlling awkward posture, high repetition, and high force. Good ergonomic design consider the ways work and associated tasks are organized and arranged to accommodate workers with different abilities and limitations. Let's look at some examples of this and then go over some pointers on implementing ergonomic controls in your workplace. Suppose your hazard identification finds workers of different heights are using a table that has a fixed height. The table will have a different effect on these workers, increasing the chance of various awkward postures of the back, neck, and shoulders. The taller person may experience forward bending of the back, while the smaller person may have to shrug their shoulders. Let's assume the task workers do at the table is critical and unable to be eliminated. Take a moment to pause the tutorial and think about the ways that you might approach solving this problem. What are the solutions that you would consider for this example? An engineering control could include the installation of a height adjustable table or multiple tables with different heights to accommodate the different statures of workers. Some other engineering controls could be to provide a seating option to lower the body position of a taller worker or add a platform layer on top of the table to increase the tabletop height for a worker of taller stature. For a worker of shorter stature, an engineering control could be to provide a platform for the worker to stand on, reducing awkward postures. An administrative control could be to limit the amount of time workers are in awkward postures or to allow for rest periods to ease muscle demands on the body. This example shows there is an opportunity to explore many solutions that can be used individually or in combination. Remember to always use the hierarchy of controls to guide which options you select. Exposures to MSD hazards in a warehouse environment may differ significantly than those of an office worker. In a warehouse, the worker may be exposed to the following, either individually or combined in a single type of task. Awkward postures when lifting items from different heights, repetitive motions associated with picking orders, high force, heavy lifting, pushing, pulling, or carrying. Let's think about the engineering and administrative controls for each of the hazards above. A warehouse worker might have to repetitively lift heavy boxes off the ground and place them on a cart at waist level. An example of an engineering control would be the installation of racks to store the boxes off the floor to eliminate the need for an awkward posture. The repetitive motion hazard might still be present, but eliminating the need for awkward postures to complete the task makes it less likely to cause MSDs. An additional engineering control would be to reduce the volume or size of the boxes to make them less heavy. You might also implement an administrative control that requires only one box can be moved at one time. This would reduce the need for higher forces required to complete the task. In an office environment, awkward postures, repetitive motions, and high force hazards may also be present and require the application of the hierarchy of controls. Let's think about a worker sitting at a desk and typing for long periods of the day. Awkward postures, repetitive motions, and forces are at play. Let's assume that it's not reasonably possible for the work to be eliminated. To remove the risks from sitting, the following engineering controls can be implemented. Provide adjustable furniture such as chairs, desks, and keyboard trays to minimize awkward postures and contact stress. Adjust the chair so the knees and hips are at 90 degree angles with the feet flat on the floor or on a footrest. Adjust the backrest and the chair's seat pan so the low back is well supported. Adjust the desk height to be at or slightly below the elbow height. Have the worker's forearms approximately horizontal with the wrists and not bent back. Adjust the height of the computer screen to be below eye level and about an arm's length away. Administrative controls could include including brief hourly stretch breaks for position changes, rotating tasks to reduce repetition, 
training to educate workers how to adjust equipment to minimize awkward posture, or keeping a maintenance program to repair malfunctioning or broken equipment. There are some basic ergonomic principles that can be used to address MSD hazards in an office or similar environments. In many cases, these are classified as engineering or administrative controls. Avoid static postures. Change it up by moving. Consider encouraging staff to regularly incorporate movement breaks if they have a job that is primarily sitting or standing. Reduce muscle fatigue. Ensure workers have a supportive adjustable chair that is adjusted to support their body size and stature. Feet should be on the floor or on a footrest to prevent tingling and numbness in the legs. Position the arms and legs in their middle range of motion to limit overexertion. Reduced muscle fatigue and discomfort. Support the arms and shoulders using comfortable working postures and armrests on a chair. This also includes the use of backrests. For non-seated tasks, if arms are in a raised position, it may be due to work surfaces being too high. Ensure the body follows the line of sight. The head and trunk can be pulled into awkward positions when workers strain to see their work. Setup of a workspace should allow clear, unobstructed vision of the screen and tasks and not require forward or downward bending of the head and neck, or twisting of the body. Reduce sustained or awkward reaches. Reduce reaching for the keyboard, mouse, or phone to decrease fatigue or discomfort. Reaching down and lifting below knee level and above shoulder height can overload the back and shoulders. Basic ergonomic principles can also be considered when starting an MSD prevention program in an industrial or field environment. For example, store it off the floor. Store and work on objects between hip and chest height. Keep it close. Handle objects or perform work close to the belly button compared to reaching away from the body to get better mechanical leverage. Also use a larger body part, such as an arm versus a finger, to distribute forces. Use aids. Use mechanical aids when lifting or handling devices, like vices or grips, when performing gripping tasks. Make sure aids are in good working order. Work with hands below the head. Work with hands below the level of the head to limit strain on the neck, upper back, shoulders, and arms. Look straight ahead. Work with the head straight and level versus looking up, to the side, or bending the neck to avoid muscle tension and strain. Get a good grip. Tools and gloves should fit the hands. Keep hands and wrists strong if performing tasks that require gripping. Change it up. A well-organized job has variety and pauses that give the body time to recover and reduce risks due to repetitive movement. Consider how to introduce a variety of tasks to avoid overuse and overexertion. There are many ways to support these ergonomic principles in the workplace and minimize hazards for developing an MSD. Ensuring both supervisors and workers understand these principles will help identify when these principles are not occurring, and then simple solutions can be developed and implemented. You are encouraged to use the resources listed on the right of the screen that contain sample checklists, templates, and example scenarios to provide further education. Also, it may help you to have a template to create for your hazard assessment report. The following example table may be a useful way to generate ideas. If you need time to put together or update your formal hazard assessment report, refer to the best practice document on hazard assessment and control at the address at the bottom of the screen, in addition to the resources provided in the previous slide. The tutorial series is produced by the OHS Prevention Initiative, a partnership between the Alberta government, industry, labor, and health and safety organizations. The following organizations contributed to this tutorial.